Hello friends and welcome back to another video. As you can see, we're here again in front of the Aurora. Chris Wilson has so graciously <laughs> welcomed us back to his beautiful cruise ship. We can't wait to explore some more. Chris, thanks so much for joining us and having us. I'm so excited okay. to get on board and see. I think you have some fun things in store for us today, don't you? Yeah, actually, due to all of the comments that we've been seeing about the engine room and uh, you know, I, I've just decided to show you guys some of the worst parts of this ship that, that, that need to be restored and kind of give you an idea what our plans are for these areas. So it's it's going to be actually kind of kind of an amazing experience, but don't get discouraged because we have great plans for these areas. I can't wait. Let's go inside. Come on with us. If you guys are ready, let's go on and explore on board. Let's go. And before we head below deck and explore the engine room and everything that goes along with it, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Alana Zingano from Travel the World A to Z. I'd love to share with you travel vlogs, cruise vlogs, cruise news, and so much more. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next video. And today is a special video because cameraman is actually going to be taking us down into the engine room with Chris. So let's go have a look. All right, guys, we are inside the Aurora in the engine room, right under the whole ship. We are here with Chris Wilson. He is going to be showing us a little bit more behind the scenes of the ship. So, Chris, take it away. All right. So this is one of the main uh, motors for the Aurora. And this thing is an absolute monster. It's ran by five. Well, there's actually two of these and they're ran by five Maybach diesel electrics. Uh, Mercedes Maybach diesel electrics and this thing uh, ran at 18 knots and each Maybach was I believe 1375 horsepower if I recall correctly so and and they're all in pretty good shape I, I actually you know I've been talked into going ahead and taking off the cover to actually let you see what's what's in one of these guys so let give me give me a moment here so guys, this is going to be a behind the scenes. As you see, Chris is going to open up parts of the Aurora that probably it has not been seen in many, many years. Yeah, we don't generally, you know, show a lot of people this stuff, but let's uh, let's dig in. Basically, it, you, what you have here is a giant motor. You know, and before this thing can operate again, this is going to have to be cleaned out, um, maggered. Uh, which is testing the coils to make sure that everything is a go. And then I don't see many reasons that this thing will not function. Everything is, you know, still intact and still absolutely beautiful. And the other one has a couple of small issues, but it's all things that you can tear apart in a component level in order to, uh, you know, repair. So I have no doubt that we can get both of these electric mains back up and operate operational. But Chris, can a ship run with just one engine? Uh, of course. Yeah. So all we need is to get this one operating and then this ship could be going all over the world in theory. Well, I don't know. I, I think you, you can limp it along with one, but uh, the level of control greatly increases if you're running two props, right? Because these things generally didn't have bow thrusters. So, you know, in order to control it and to, and to be able to pull up to a dock, uh, you know, you, you, would, you would need to control with, you know, to control it with both uh, motors. So, yeah, if you look, these walls are about two inch thick solid steel and the outers are, are a good four inches. You can see these bolts go into you know the steel so so that that's that that's that's a heavy uh, a very heavy motor <laughs> so i mean this is this is really cool stuff and and uh back in 1955 this was the the test platform for may mercedes maybach diesel electric and it was and basically they run kind of the same as a as a locomotive that's that's what this uh propulsion was basically taken out of um so Anyway, that's that's kind of your you know quick tour of the motor, <laughs> and now uh, I guess we'll move on to one of the Maybox. So you want to follow me around? Okay. So this is the Mercedes, or the you know this is the generator portion, and if we keep moving 
moving forward, it's going to take us to the uh, 12 cylinder Mercedes, you know, Maybach 655 uh, diesel engine. And this thing is, is uh, absolutely a monster. And they're all in relatively good condition. There's really no reason that we could find. We've actually popped covers and uh, looked into these things pretty well. And there's, I don't, I don't see any reason that these couldn't be brought back up to a fully running condition. Um, do they meet today's standards? No, but it's the same as taking the, uh, you know, like a 350 out of your Corvette and putting in like a, you know, like a Nissan motor or something. It, it, it doesn't make sense to, you know, take the engines out of something like this. So we're, we're gonna, you know, leave this thing, you know, all of the Maybox in place in the future and we're going to disassemble them and we're going to have uh, some skilled people actually come in to you know deal with these things and get them all back up to you know up to snuff one day probably sooner than later because we get a lot of people uh, asking about them so so i think uh i think that's what we're going to do probably fly a few people over from germany uh to have a look at them and i think we have uh you know enough people in our group that that you know, there's a few that are ready and willing to come over here to see these things fire on the on the uh, Wappen von Hamburg one. <laughs> so, so how many of them are on the Aurora? How many of these? There was five of them, but somebody took out one of them, disassembled it, and I think pretty much all the parts are on board, so it could be put back together and you know put back into place, but. I don't really know the status on number five. So let, let's just say that we have four to operate with. Um, and really we could do anything that we wanted to do with this ship with only three of these operational. You can limp it along with just one of these. But you know, I would, I would really love to see all of the ones that uh, should be running on this vessel actually operational. So there you guys have it. It is a behind the scenes, literally behind the scenes of the Aurora. And you guys are getting to see something that many have not yeah. in probably what, 20, 30 years? It's been a long time. And uh, until we actually get the volunteers into the engine room, five or six people down here in order to, you know, um, assess uh, everything, then you know, then, then we're really not going to show a whole lot of it until then. You guys, here is one of the fire hoses in the engine room in case if there was ever a fire. It's pretty cool to see the old design of it. This is, my guess, probably sometime in the 60s or 70s, just by the look of it. If you do know a little bit more of fire hoses, please let us know. So now as we're still touring the engine room, we are gonna see one of the main generators for the ship. Uh, Chris, take it away. Let us know what, we, what we're looking at. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a Waukesha six cylinder diesel uh, generator and it's uh, got a 300 kW stator to run all the 208 volt electrical on the Aurora. So this thing hasn't been fired in a long time, but I did get in here and uh, look under the covers and I actually turned it over manually. And this thing is like a, a, a weekend task to get this thing operational and, and you know, it's gonna suck up like five gallons an hour. But <laughs> so, so we, we don't, we wouldn't generally use it even when it is, it, when it is running. But it, uh, you know, it'd be one of those things that's nice to, you know, nice to have operational if you really need it. But it's a, I mean, it's a beautiful motor and parts are still readily available for it. So yeah, it's not, not in too bad a condition. I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, know that uh, a lot of the components on board are still, you know, in a salvageable state to where we can you know, make things operate once again. And, and really, if you think about it, no matter how the engine room looks, it could, it could all be brought up with, you know, five or six volunteers. We could actually get these things operational 
and running, you know, for the right, of course, the right amount of money, um, you know, we, we, we could actually get this thing limping along, but, um, you know, it's best to wait until we're able to put her into a, a dry dock and, you know, service the shafts and the props and things like that and, you know, redo a lot of the work on the bottom of the ship. So that's all coming later, but, you know, we have the intention to do all that. So we've talked before about volunteers and everything else. Would this be one of those areas that if anybody wanted to sponsor the room or is this going to be available? If somebody wanted to say, you know what, Chris, I want to fix the engine. I want to provide. Can I get my little plaque with my name in the engine room? Um, well, you know, I never really considered the engine room to be something like that because this is this is pretty much the heart of the vessel. And it's definitely probably the most expensive area in the vessel to restore. And uh, but yeah, if uh, if there's somebody if there's somebody that actually wants to adopt maybe maybe one of the May box to see it restored and operational, then absolutely. Um, you know we would we would let that happen. There's just been so many people. You know, generally we, we, we haven't taken donations for this ship and, you know, in all the time that I've owned it, we've done everything on our own dime and we've made things, we've made miracles happen. But a lot of people are trying to figure out how can they help, you know, how can they, um, you know, what, what, what can they do in order to pitch in? So, so many people are asking and the only way that they really can help is to you know maybe adopt an area uh, like if you want to uh, see a cabin or you know maybe one of the may box or or even the waukesha here uh, you know get fully restored and operational um, then yeah we could assess what that's going to cost and and put together an estimate and that could be a contribution that somebody could feasibly you know kick in to help us Perfect. So you guys, you guys heard it first. <laughs> the engine room may or may not be available. As we take a look at the rest of the engine room and other parts of the area, um, please, if you haven't followed uh, Chris Wilson's Facebook, we're going to make sure it's listed below. Uh, you're going to see many more other behind the scenes. So stay tuned. Still got the hand crank. the phone system that actually you know you can talk to the bridge or you can talk to various other locations uh, you know whatever whatever it says here you just switch it back and forth and then it has a big bell on the top of it so that when someone's trying to call the engine room that you can get on here and I mean the headset is so unique I haven't seen another one like this so I'm sure that they exist and they're probably common but I have not seen one. I mean, it would be it would be such a fun task to take this box, pull it off the wall, go through the electronics, and actually get this thing you know back 100% operational, and you know to where you could call up the bridge and do all that stuff. But um, anyway, for now, it's just a kind of a relic down here. Another area on board the Aurora that we generally don't show a whole lot of is the control room. And this room is, you know, completely here, but it's seen some better days. And uh, there are a few components missing and things like that, but there's really not much here that you could not salvage off from, you know, other vessels or even find used on eBay these days. And literally, if I put the word out, then, you know, we can find anything in, a, a, you know, in short order. But a lot of this, uh, since, uh, since it was converted over from DC, most of the components to AC, a lot of this is not even relevant anymore. So this room is only about a quarter relevant to this ship. Um, but, you know, if we do bring the Mercedes Maybach diesel electric back online, then a lot of this stuff we're going to, uh, you know, have to make operational or maybe even retrofit, you know, and put a few new components in and things like that but I'm kind of stuck on the vintage more than anything. So I would love to see the old brought back to new. 
and you know without without a bunch of new newer components basically so that that's kind of where we're at with this and you know eventually eventually we're going to get around to this but that's not where we're at quite yet <laughs> but anyway that's kind of the tour the, the, the quick uh the quick look at the control room <laughs> well friends that does it if you enjoyed the video show your support by smashing the thumbs up button and check out these other two videos that you might enjoy as well. Until next time, ciao for now.